Our program uh, continues with what's become a tradition. It's called the Best of the Boardroom. And this year's reception is made possible through the very kind, generous support uh, of Morgan Stanley uh, and Hispanic Executive Magazine. And I'd like to invite Susan Reed to say a few words uh, on behalf of Morgan Stanley. And thank you, Morgan Stanley, for your support. So everyone, please welcome Susan Reed. Uh, first of all, I just want to say we're really thrilled um, to be here and to have uh, really the honor of uh, co-sponsoring this reception um, along with Hispanic Executive. Um, you know, those of you who are familiar with Morgan Stanley, you know, we have a tagline and we like to say that we like to do first class business in a first class way. And so I want to congratulate Hasir on a first class kickoff to your 23rd annual uh, leadership summit. Uh, in a first class venue and with first class people. I mean, this has just been phenomenal. Um, really phenomenal. I, I recognize this is the end of the night. This is a, about a party right now, so you, d you are not allowed to speak for long at a party. That's a cardinal sin, I think. Um, I, I just want to say a few words. Um, first of all, I just want to point out we have a couple of Morgan Stanley colleagues here, important colleagues here with us tonight. Um, I want to start off by, uh, and I don't know where she is hiding, Claudia, are you here? I just want to start off by uh, introducing Claudia Marmolejo. Ca Claudia is the co-chair of our Latino Employee Networking Group. Thank you for being here, Claudia. Um, uh, Libra Clemens, who is uh, the head of our multicultural initiatives at the firm. Um, I appreciate you coming. And then Keisha Charles, who is somewhere in the room as well. There she is, Keisha. Uh, Keisha is an HR officer here in the Atlanta office. So, so I want to uh, I, I want to make sure you know who's in the room from Morgan Stanley. Um, look again, uh, thank you to to Hasir for uh, really allowing us to co-sponsor this event. I have to to say to the board, you made a really wise decision when you chose Sid. Um, to be the president of uh, Hasir. Um, yes. Uh, we, we had the pleasure of meeting Sid a few months ago in New York. He came in to spend some time with us. And I have to tell you, when Sid walks into a room, um, there's this immediate sense of connection. Sid has a way of pulling you in and making you family uh, instantly. And you know, it, it helps that he's from our industry. He worked in financial services, and so um, we've got that as a foundation. And uh, I am thrilled that we have been pulled into this by Sid. I look forward to really growing the relationship between us and Hasir. Um, you know, my job as head of diversity is to really help the firm think about talent and diverse talent. And a lot of what Carlos said earlier really resonated with me. I mean, I, in a powerful way, right? Um, when he talked about being a, a, a person of color in a bank and struggling to feel like he was part of that bank, we see that all the time. And what we're trying to do is overcome some of that, right? I mean, there's no point in going to campuses and recruiting or recruiting top executives if when they get in, they feel like they're alone on, uh, on, on an island. And so that really resonated um, with me. Um, you know, I, I think one of the things that we continue to work on is how do we grow up our pipeline? How do we get executives into our organization, Hispanic executives? Um, I, you know, one of the things that we're, we're doing um, is, again, partnering with organizations like Hasir. Um, we've agreed to co-sponsor a, uh, a, a research study that the Center for Talent Innovation is doing next year on how do you develop Hispanic talent. Um, so there are a number of things that we're trying to do. We run a wonderful program called LEAD, Leader Executive Advancement and Development Program that is specifically targeted to black and Hispanic executives at the firm. Um, and this year I was thrilled um, that we had five Hispanics, five, five Hispanics promoted to managing director at the firm. And I think um, that, that was a significant number for Morgan Stanley. <laughs> So again, uh, thank you for inviting us to be part of this. Um, I, I really look forward to, 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 to being part of the family. There was, there's an incredible sense of, of family in this room. When I walked into dinner, the buzz. Um, and so with, with, uh, with Sid's invitation, we're here, and we hope that you continue to invite us back to be part of this wonderful organization. Really, thank you.
Great. Thank you again, Morgan Stanley, and thank you, Susan Reed. Um, at this time, I'd like to welcome Casey Caldwell, the editor of Hispanic Executive Magazine, our other sponsor uh, for uh, this post-dinner reception, uh, to say a few words. Uh, Casey? Thank you, Sid. I have to tell you, it has been a pleasure featuring Sid Wilson in the pages of Hispanic Executive Magazine for two issues and running. Um, I want to start by giving a really big thank you to Hacer Un Agradecimiento Muy Profundo. You've been an incredible partner to us at Hispanic Executive, and thank you for everything that you do. Um, like Sid said, I'm the managing editor of Hispanic Executive Magazine, and uh, I couldn't be more excited to share with you the celebration of our second annual Best of the Boardroom issue. Um, <laughs> the Best of the Boardroom issue is uh, a select group of Latinos who are leaders on corporate boards. Uh, as we all know, there are still far too few of us who hold that level of corporate power despite dramatic growth in uh, Latino consumers, Latino decision makers, and investors in this country. So our best of the boardroom are truly leaders by example. And for this issue, we had the incredible honor of having a guest editor contribute her expertise, the lovely Ana Dutra. Ana Dutra is a... Uh, Yes, thank you. <laughs> she is the CEO of the Executives Club of Chicago. She sits on the board of directors for the CME Group and countless other corporate and nonprofit organizations. Anna was truly an extension of our team for the making of this issue, and we couldn't be more grateful for her, to, for her expertise, for her energy. Um, she, because of our collaboration with her, we not only had a focus on the common ethnicity of these best of the boardroom, but also the gender. Six Latinas this year comprise our best of the boardroom, including... <laughs> including our cover star, Monica Lozano, who sits on the boards of Walt Disney and Bank of America. Uh, and before I continue, I would like to share with you a video to give you a behind the scenes look of the making of the Best of the Boardroom issue with Ana Dutra. Hispanic Executive presents the making of the Best of the Boardroom issue with guest editor, Ana Dutra. So I remember the first time I actually looked at the Hispanic Executive Magazine and I thought what a great way to uh, create a community for Hispanic executives uh, in North America. When they approached me to play this role of guest editor in the board edition, I have to say that I was flattered and, and surprised. For me, it is, it is a great honor. I just hoped that I would be up to the task. Back when we met Ana Dutra and she was taking over as president and CEO of the Executives Club of Chicago, we wrote a web exclusive article on her thinking that would be the end of it. Uh, once we met her and she was so excited to be involved with us and had all these great ideas and was incredibly well spoken and lovely and, and I thought oh, I would really love for the readers of Hispanic Executive to see a lot more of her. So back in October when we started putting together the best of the boardroom issue, we thought, let's have Anna guest edit this issue. Well, throughout my career, I have not only been an operating executive, but I've also uh, been a board director in a number of boards, which I still am, as well as, as a consultant, I did a lot of work on, on assessing board effectiveness. She really knows what she's talking about and she is a CEO and a board member and she has her law degree and she is just incredibly well connected when she has all that insight into the world of corporate board life and we wanted to make sure that we had that knowledge behind this magazine. Well less than three percent of, um, of the board seats in Fortune 500 companies are occupied by women. And if we take it down to Hispanic women, then it's 0.3%. Needless to say, we have to increase those numbers. We wanted to start there to give it a foundation for why we were even doing uh, an issue like that. 
Then we brought in a number of directors uh, with very, very different career paths and backgrounds as it relates to their board work. Then finally, we focused on sharing best practices and, and given our own experience and knowledge about what works and what doesn't work. Having a guest editor is something that we definitely want to continue. It's an opportunity for us to highlight someone else's expertise. And in the case of Anna, she really shined through in this issue as the expert that she is. What it takes to go from an idea to actually an issue of a magazine was fascinating for me. That was an area that uh, I didn't have experience in and I learned, I learned a lot. I want to give a shout out, just one moment, to uh, Nelson Diaz, a boardroom elite. <laughs> Boardroom Elite, former cover member, and now he is running for mayor of Philadelphia. And <laughs> I, I want to say, um, I want to say, uh, on behalf of everyone here, we wish you the best of luck in your campaign. Thank you, Nelson. Um, so we were able to conclude this issue with a conversation between Ana Dutra and Sid Wilson about the importance of Latino participation on the corporate boards. And I will conclude my speech with bringing it back to really the most integral person in this issue, which was Ana Dutra. Uh, where is she? Our our guest editor, Anna. Uh, Anna, thank you so much for your collaboration, for your leadership, and uh, we look forward to continuing our partnership with the Executive Club. Thank you all. This is a token of our appreciation. Of course. Anyway, I'll pass it off to Anna. Thank you. Well, good evening. I am sure the last thing you want is another speech right now. But I have to say that it was just not right to have that gorgeous picture of Eva Longor and then you put my face there like this. So, in any case, um, it was an incredible pleasure to be part, to be part of this edition. And uh, I have to say that when I first got the call, I was uh, just a big fan and reader of the magazine, had done a couple of interviews, but when I got the call and the message, I said, seriously? Are you sure you want me to do that? And I, I remember my, my assistant saying, this is going to be a lot of work. You have no idea. <laughs> but the team, KC, Viani, and the entire crew, they held my hand. You guys were fantastic. Throughout the period, it was so much fun. And just going from seeing nothing, right? Just, just ideas and a bunch of phenomenal names. So Pat Pineda, uh, Adela Cepeda, Nelson Diaz, Lunieto, Jose Luis Prado, who are all in the room here, providing their stories, their experience, their lessons learned, and their advice to others who are now climbing the ladder and we need to bring through the pipeline was just an incredible pleasure. We have to continue to strive to have Latinos in the pipeline for executive positions and in the boardroom. The numbers are still ridiculous. It's 3% of the seats in the boards of Fortune 500 companies only occupied by Latinos. And by the way, if you look at us, Latinas, then it's 0.3%. Wow. It's up to us to change that, yes up to you to help us change, change that. But uh, with all that, there was, there was also a bonus that I want to share with you, and uh, I have not even shared that with you, Casey. So as um, a dutiful Latina, a Brasileira, the first thing I did when I got the magazine was to send to my mother, right? That first thing. She, prob she probably has it on the walls, in her car, it's a banner, she's showing it to everybody. But then I got a call from her. And uh, what she said was, não acredito igualzinho ao seu pai. <laughs> I can't believe just like your dad. And my father, uh, who passed away 18 years ago, was a media executive. He was the chief marketing officer for Global 
and he started his, his career as a journalist. And my mother reminded me that that's exactly what he did when he started his career. And I have to believe that at that moment I realized that all the fun and the pleasure and all the engagement that I had was also guided by my dad, who was, I have to believe, somehow with me. So thank you for that connection more than anything else. It really brought me back to memories of my childhood with him, writing and speaking and broadcasting that, quite frankly, I didn't, I didn't connect up front. Now, I had so much fun that I actually went back to them and asked for a job, which they are still, <laughs> hopefully, uh, considering. I'd love to continue to do that. I will uh, encourage all of you who are invited as, um, as speakers, as guests, as interviewees, as editors, to take it on. The team will work with you. They are phenomenal. And then, of course, the biggest, biggest bonus of all is to be here, to be part of HACER and LCDA. I am the newest member brought in by Jose Luis. And, um, and I hope I can come every year. So thank you so much, and thank you for the treat as well. You guys are wonderful. Uh, and then please uh, enjoy the rest of the evening uh, and take advantage of this networking opportunity. And again, bienvenido a Atlanta. And uh, thank you for a great start to our said weekend of programs. Thank you very much.